Hi guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a demo right now. We're going to talk about um, how to start distorting our house and I'm going to walk you through a couple basic steps. Okay, uh, step number one, just to go over them really quick, there's three basic steps we're going to go through. We're going to go through two of those right now in this lecture and then what we'll do is on Thursday I'll do another lecture that incorporates uh, the third step, which is uh, the three steps. Number one is going to be counter angle. Number two is going to be bending. Number three is going to be punching holes through objects and roofs, okay? But before we get to the punching hole, we need to talk about the other two because they go in a particular order. Now, I want to show you, I happen to come across, um, I have this house right here that I built um, for a, um, for a show back a, a couple years ago and I thought I'd show it to you right now everything on this house is pretty straight laced okay uh, when we look at the roof the roof is very straight there's tiles that go straight across it okay there's no bends there um, even when we come up here and we look at the front door the front door is very straight there's been a couple things I've modified just a little bit but we'll get back to that in a second okay when we look at the garage here look at how straight that roof is right there okay now let me show you the finished version of that that I ended up turning in okay so if we come over here now look at that roof over there total difference see how much more wonk that is so um, the term wonkiness or a slight bend in the stuff it adds a lot of character but there's a distinct reason why some of you guys started building your houses and you started putting wonks and tilts on them and there's a reason why that's very negative two reasons number one if I built the underlining structure, which is this, let me see if I can just raise it right here. If I have this underlining roof structure right here, okay? I'm trying to select it here. Let me raise it above. I keep selecting everything. Hold on a second. Let me just hide this here. There we go. Now I can select it. If I built that structure, like Andrew, when you're working on yours, you already had a bend. If I try to go along that bend now and put roof tiles, there's a, an automatic curve to it. It would be an absolute nightmare for me to figure out how to get roof tiles on there. Now, since we're going to be up close to our scene and we want a lot of detail, I want you guys to model the roof tiles into, into individual tiles. If you're working on a game production or something where you'd see the house in the very background, you wouldn't have to have the individual roof tiles on it, okay? But the fact we're going to punch a hole in it, it's an old decrepit house, we want those there, okay? Um, so. I hope that makes, st makes sense as rule number one as to why we wait to um, put a bend or a uh, distortion on something um, once we get it completely modeled. So what I thought I would do to solidify part of this process is first I'm going to talk about counter angle and what that is, okay? Um, which is similar to contrapasta, okay? Those of you that have had figure drawing, the elements of design that happen in there transfer forward into a 3D form, okay? Then we'll talk about bending slash distortion a little bit, okay? So step number one, okay? When you look over here, let's just take this front door for an example, okay? Do you see, let me select the front door. Do you see how there's a slight tilt on that door? And then I have the window that's right above it, and that's at a little bit of an angle, Okay, so let me come back over here to the previous set that I have and talk about this is sort of what we call, um, what I call counter angle. Okay, so if I was going to work on the scene, what I would do is I would take this upper portion right here. Okay, and I might bend this a little bit this way. Do you see if I tilt that a little bit this way to one particular angle to the left? And then I come over here now, so I have a slight almost, you know, uh, going on to, a, let's see here, what am I at? Looking at my outliner. About a, about a 1.7 degree turn on that roof right there. Okay. Versus if I come over here to the door now, I want to counter turn the door so it's going against that angle. So this angle is tipped up heavier on the right side going to the left. Okay. And then the, the angle of the door is now counter angle. It's going in the opposite direction. That is rule number one that's really imperative to do is to try to establish counter angles whenever you're going to take a house that's straight and you're going to start to wonk it. Another reason why we want to keep our house straight is I have that straight set to go back and reuse if I ever need other parts. Once I start to wonk a set or distort it, it's now completely changed and I can't reuse those parts as easily as I can when it's completely straight. So that's why I instructed you guys to model the house first straight in an upright position. 
save that as the straight house, then go back in, create it, and then save a new file as, you might call it old decrepit house distorted, file number one, and then keep working along that process, okay? So one of the things that happened here when I grabbed this roof line, you can see I have the underneath structure that wasn't grouped there. So I'm going to have to go back, hit Command G there. I'm going to have to go back and select that roof structure that's right there. Now I'm going to hit G to group it. Now as I come in here and I start to, I think it's attached to something else too. Let's see. No, it's not. I just happen to have, there we go. I just didn't center the pivot. My bad. Okay, so now as I go to wonk this a little bit, and to turn it like that, it's going to sort of make sense. And just that slightest little angle right here, that was a 2 degree. I was at like 1.4 last time. Okay. This is where you want to be looking over here in your channel box selection to make sure you're getting just a, a, just enough tilt on it. Okay. 1.5 is just fine for me. I don't want to go anything too much more than that. Now, what I might do is I could come up to the roof structure, which I already have grouped. And if I wanted to, I could put a slight tilt on that. And that's even, that's a 2.25 degree. That's even too much. I might come back and put this just at 1.2. Okay, it's just ever so subtle, slight tilts are going to make it work. Now, you, there's a, if I stand back and look at that, you can see how that's even tilted a little bit too much. I can now come back into that and adjust it with numbers to get it sort of just the way that I like it. But those little tilts and what I call counter angles. So, contrapasta, this roof is tilting heavier to the right side. This is the secondary roof is now tilting to the left side. And when I come over to the door, it's now tilting back to the right side as well. Okay, so there's little subtle differences there that start to change and interact with the set. We call that counter angle. Okay, counter angle is really important. Any level of really good design, any level of, of when you get into stylize, stylization, and adding style to something, especially at a feature film level where we're working with environments and sets. Things that are completely straight at 90 degree angles are stiff. They are boring. So in order to add character to those, rule number one is adding a little bit of counter angle. Okay, so I, and I showed you right here, I thought I'd continue back in this scene here. If we look at this, this is completely straight and stiff right here. Okay, so what I can do is I've already gone on my outliner and I've grouped a bunch of this the scene here. So if I hit F right now in my outliner, you can see I have front entry doors all grouped together. This way, now I can touch a part of this door, come under my grouping here, and I have large front window. So it makes it a lot easier for me when I group in what I call cleaning my file to select parts that I want to modify. Some of you guys haven't done that, and I want you to do that on this set on this assignment since we have a little bit more time here. You now have the time to go in, select areas, group them together as one, and this will be really important for two reasons. Number one, as you send your file down a work production pipeline, okay, other artists, either texture artists or lighters, are going to be able to go into your grouping and find parts of your file. Number two is you're working on your file and you're lighting it or adding textures. You can do that very quickly by using your outliner here. In fact, I can do it really fast just by using my independent selection tool, selecting an item, coming over here, dragging my cursor over the group and hit F, and it'll automatically take me to where that is in the outline, which saves me a tremendous amount of time when I start getting involved with lighting and uh, texturing. Now, what's really important about that is we're going to start talking about lighting next. So one of the things you should consider doing is as you're working on your, your modeling, your set, and your finished model, grouping your items, getting those items to come together, and then getting rid of the old previous items, okay? So now look, now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to wonk out this window a little bit, okay? Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I've selected all the core parts of this window, okay? So if I have an angle right here that's going down towards the right side, what would be a good counter angle for me to use on this, on this window right here? To go from right to left, that's right. That's counter angle. So what's funny is that if I'm teaching a class in character design, environmental modeling, or if I'm doing work for studios, this is stuff that's running through my head all the time. Okay, counter angle, distortion, and, um, and then of course punching holes, but that's more of a my thing. So what I'm going to do right now is come over here. Look, I'm going to grab these vertices. Okay, I'm going to select them like so, and I'm just going to raise them up a little bit. If for some reason you go to raise a set of vertices and they all separate, 
that means that the object has multiple pivot points that are going in a multiple direction. So the way that you fix that is you do this, is you select the key objects that you want, or if they're grouped together already, you go under edit, and uh, excuse me, modify, and you go to freeze transformations. I have a hotkey for that. So if you ever had an object that's grouped, like a window, you go to grab it, and as you move it, all three of the parts separate into their own mass. That's because they all have different transformation points. If you tell it to freeze transformations, it resets all of those transformations back to a zero, zero, zero axis point on X, Y, and Z, right? And then it allows you then to grab all the vertices and move them at one time. Saves you a tremendous amount of time. So right here, I'm going to grab, I'm going to touch the window pane. I'm going to touch the outside, uh, the inner frame of the window, the outside frame. We talked about framing on windows and how important it is and the detail with such a minute amount of vertices, right? I'm going to go to my vertices selection, select these vertices. I'm going to grab them up just ever so slightly like that. And then I'm going to drag them out just a little bit. Okay, now if I drag these two extreme like this, it won't have any functionality of the window, number one. Number two, it's going to ruin the beveled edge that I have on the window frame that keeps it nice and smooth. So you don't ever want to do anything too extreme. Now if you happen to be working on a show that's super extreme, your solution to that would be to model the window frame first, then to go in and bevel the edge. But I'm just putting a light adjustment on there, okay? Now as I did that angle here, Okay, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to distort this a little bit. Now, I tend to have sort of a basic rule that I was taught um, when I was working at Disney and then we were um, adjusting angles on, on uh, things to wonk them and stylize them a little bit, is the line on the bottom, you always leave straight. Does that make sense? And it's something I learned, too, in drawing environments. Whenever an object or a house hits the ground, that line wants to stay what we call plumb, or flush at a 90 degree at a nice 90 degree you want to wonk and bend everything else that is there okay so when I look down here at these lower vertices I'm not if I decide to wonk this a little bit I'm not going to wonk it by pulling it up or down because now I'm distorting what I call the foundation and the foundation is really important because that's how the structure of the house or the windows anchor down to something so what I can do is pull this left or right so if I grab this now and just pull it a little bit to the left, you see what I did there? I've now raised the upper right corner and I've pulled this one in a little bit tighter, but I'm not going to raise it up or down. I'm only going to raise it left or right horizontally so I can create a little bit of a pinched angle on it. But if I do it too much to the other direction, it won't look right. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here. Let me hide this camera, guys. Sorry, it's right in the way. I'm going to select the edge of that frame right there. I'm going to come over here, find that shutter. It's right there, grouped together. And what I can do now, I have two options. I could grab it and bend it and wonk it, but I have individual pieces in here that are shutters, right? So if I grab this and bend it right here, you see those individual pieces start to show. So a couple of the options that I have that I can use is, number one, um, I could put a lattice on it real quick. And now I have, I'm using my hotkeys here, which you guys should be using. So if I use my uh, lattice points now and grab some of these points, let's say I grab about, always grab in the sections of two, and I pull these over, that's one thing I could do. Let's take a look at the model. It did it successfully, and it pulled the boards over, right? That's just fine. That's one way that I could do that. Okay, let me Command-Z and go back there for a minute. The other thing I could do is I could just put a light tilt on it like this. See that? I don't even need to really wonk it as much, just putting a little tilt. So there's a difference between grabbing the angle of something and wonking it, which is what I call it because now you're distorting it, or just putting a slight rotate on something. A slight rotate does the same principle sometimes, and it adds a lot of style. And you see that? It's really simple. I tilted that one. So if I tilted that one going towards the left, I should therefore come over here, grab that shutter, and I should tilt that going in the direction to the right to counter angle the other one, okay? Our mind sees in groups the way that we associate and design. We tend to see things that are um, with symmetry and grouping. So this window has symmetry in it. I have a left shutter, a right shutter. If I put counter angles on both of those, it's going to apply. And then not just the counter angle to the windows now. If I'm going to select this upper window up here, right there. I have it selected because it's already grouped, right? I'm going to come over here. 
I'm going to put a light rotate on that like this. I'm going to raise it up. Now, technically, I could turn this window going with the angle of the house if I want the angle of the window to sit up on top like that. That would work. Or I could even counter angle the window and I could pitch it a little bit like this and raise it up a little bit higher. It, that's just going to dictate at what level of distortion I'm placing onto my scene. Okay. And so right now, if I back off of this, um, it's, you can see if I turn it to the right here, it doesn't quite look as good because when I look at the big picture, I already have this window over here to the left tilted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the decision to go with the tilt of, of the top roof of the window line and just get it a little bit above and leave it like that. See how that worked? That way I have uh, the window frame up above the door tilting a little bit to the right and this one's tilting a little bit to the left and I have just enough counter angle to make this front of the house very interesting and appealing. Okay. Um, all right. So that's, that's us talking about counter angle right now. Where else could I add counter angle? Well, if I wanted to, look at this. I have this front pole right here. Do you see that? I have that support post right there. If I want to, I've already actually done this just a little bit. Let, let me come back here. Let's take a look at the other scene because I have two different sets here. So that was the straight scene, okay, where everything in here is, if I touch that pole right there, it's completely at zero, zero, zero. Nothing's been wonked out at all, okay? So what I'm going to do, let's come back to this one. I already, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a light bend in there. And what I did to get that bend is I froze transformations on there. I selected a bunch of the vertices like this, and I just lightly moved that. Now, what's happening when I'm moving it? It's all separating into different pieces, right? So what happened is when I grouped that back together, okay, something on there, um, all the, the transformations are separate right now. So what I'm going to do is select that entire piece like this. I'm going to come back under Modify, Freeze Transformations. Make sure the pivot's centered, okay? Now as I come over here and I select, sorry you can't see my selection box that well. Now as I select this and move it, you see what happens now? I can really get some really cool distort on there. See that? Now that would be way too much of a distort to happen, right? But imagine if you had to model something that was distorted, you will remember your instructor Phil who walked you through this process and told you to build it upright first then you can go in and place a little bit of, of distortion or wonk onto it. I like the term wonk because you're just putting a slight little bend on things, but I don't like the term wonkiness where it's too much, it's too excessive, okay? So now instead of moving it, what else can I do? I don't have to just move it, but yet I could do this, ready? I could just grab the move, uh, the, um, I can't talk today, the rotate tool here, and I could just grab the red line and just lightly turn it. Do you see that? I just turned it maybe a slight degree or two, and what that does is it creates a little bit of character to the house. So it's not that you always have to move things, just even having a slight rotation allows you to get some of that. So now if I come over here and select this side right here, okay, I'm going to freeze transformations using my, I have a hotkey called Alt-F, so if I hit Alt-F right now, I just froze the transformations on there. I can go to D, okay, uh, excuse me, D is my private hotkey to select just the vertices. So what I'm going to do is go to Rotate. Now I'm going to rotate this in just a teeny bit. That's even too much right there, so I'm going to rotate it back. I'm making small little 1.5 degree changes here that are allowing me to get this sort of stylized feel. Now you look, after I've done that, what's happened here? I need to check on my scene. Well, my stairs, look at this. I've rotated this at a little bit of an angle here. So now I have to manipulate my stairs a little bit. So let's do that. I'm going to select these vertices. I'm going to pull this and stick it back into the side of there. I'm going to stick that side, pull it back into here. So let me do the same thing for the stair up above. I should have just done them all together. But there is a little bit of a change where this is wider here and gets a little smaller. So I sort of have to manually do each one individually, which won't take me much time. Okay, now on the stairs. We talked about counter angle, right? This is the foundation of the house. Someone tell me, what did I just tell you a couple minutes ago about the foundation of the house? Leave it what? Exactly. Leave it flush and plumb. Leave it a 90 degree angle. So even a key principle I learned in drawing, if you wonk that and distort it, it distorts everything. You have to leave the foundation flush. Okay. Now, the, But what I can do is look at that stair, though. I could come over here to the stair, and I could do this. I could lightly tilt that stair. 
just a slight degree tilt, 1.4 degree tilt. That's all I have to do. But now, what do we talk about? Counter angle. So now I'm going to come down and grab this stair, and I'm going to lightly bend this one back this way. 1.5. In fact, I can't even control it. I'm just going to come in here and type in 1.2. There, that one has a light tilt, and then I'm going to come back in here. Now, if I wanted to put a bend in this stair, that's another option, which leads us to sort of the second part, which I call bending or distortion. Let's say I want to put a lattice on that and bend it. So watch, if I go put a lattice on it, and I go to grab my lattice points, it won't bend. Why won't it bend anybody? Why won't that piece right there bend? Because there's no subdivisions in it, right? So if I want to put a bend on something, and that'll bring us to the second part of this when I distort the roof line, which I'm going to go do in a second. I thought I'd work on the front of the house here first, okay, with counter angle in this part of the lecture. So watch. I'm going to hit, I have a hotkey for that, for inserting edge loops. It's Alt S. So watch. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I could come over here and I could select this. Okay. I always have to click. There we go. And now I'm going to go put a lattice on it. Now that my lattice is on it, let's go here to lattice point. All right. Now I'm going to select that middle point and watch what happens. I'm going to bend it down a little bit. Aha. See that? And I bend this one down a little bit more. Look at that. Now I have a nice little bend and arc in there. Okay. So when I click on this, take off the history, do you see how nice that feels? I have the foundation, which is straight. I have an angle right here that curves a little bit to the right, counter angle a little bit to the left, and then a little bit of a natural bend in there. That's the same way I would handle it in a drawing. There's a little bit of a procedure there. That's why, Andrew, when you modeled that house, it was so much banded on it and so much wonk in the beginning. It, it, it's too much. It kills it. We're doing slight one degree tilts and turns here. And as I pull out from my house, um, can you see how attractive the front end of that house is now, being a little bit stylized? There's a light curve on here. There's a light curve in there. We get up here. There's a light curve to the roof line, okay? Um, the, this upper roof line now has a light bend on it. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this part right now, how to put a lattice on here and put a nice bend on your roof. So now I'm getting a nice stylized uh, feature to my house, and there's so many more things I could do. But you have to be careful. It's like anything in drawing and in design. If I over-detail something, what's going to happen? When you're taught to render, if you over-detail one area, it becomes too much. It's overwhelming. It's the same principle with doing any type of, of distortion. If I'm doing counter angle or I'm doing bending or punching holes, if I do too much of it, it's going to be overwhelming because this is what happens. It's just like an artist who's drawing. You guys are going to come in here and you're going to spend so much time up close. You're going to come in and start doing all this. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and I'm going to look at your scene and you're going to start to wonk like everything in the scene. Remember, in good design and good drawing, we have areas of busyness and then we have areas of rest. It's really important. It's an important foundation of composition, okay, of opposites that not only applies to drawing and design, character design, environments, vehicles, okay, you see, by me doing that now, it's, it's just getting way too busy up there, okay? And now if I came in, let me Command-Z and go back, and if I did that to, like, every other one, that would be a different story. Maybe i distort one a little bit, okay? Because in real life, there are character to objects. Things go higher, they go lower. Wood bends in the sun. It gets wet, it warps, it distorts a little bit. Houses tend to set. What I mean by set, after they've been built and water and the, um, um, I can't talk right now, and the weather and all the different conditions and the environment affect the way the wood settles and then it starts to lean to one side. My, on my house, I have a support line that runs down the middle and in my garage, because my house was built in the 70s, they didn't put a massive support line in the middle. So the top of my roof does this, it has a light bend over the garage because there's no support in the garage line right there, but it adds character to the house, okay? So that's the same thing you have to remember. How long, these are Victorian houses that have been sitting around for how long? Lots of years, okay? Sometimes 
50, 80, 90, 100 years, depending if you're up in the Bay Area, if you're out in Pasadena. Okay, they have a lot of care. Some of them were built in like, you know, 1840s, okay, 1800s. So some of them are over, well over 100 years old, okay? So you need to think about, hey, I might have a tile missing. I might have a tile that's about to fall off. I might have a corner of the roof apex um, bending down, you know, but don't overkill it. If you go in, that's a key thing. So I'm going to make that note right here in this lecture. Don't overkill. Don't bend and wonk and distort everything in it. Then it's going to look like, um, you know, somebody designed it who has um, their eyes pointing together in the middle and they have a bad pair of glasses on and they can't see in the middle of the day. Okay. You don't want to overkill it. It would be too much. Okay. All right. So let's leave that right now. Um, I just want to show you the differences. When you look at this, there's some stylization happening here. And you know what? I could even address a little bit more stylization in the back of the house. When I worked on this show, we were seeing the house from this angle right here, from a front angle. So if you look, um, you will see there's some light bends happening up in here. And then we really had a lot of fun with the wood uh, on the main gate because that was a key area where the characters walked through. Even right here, I put we put a nice bend on there. Look at that. Even the sideboards here, there's a little bend on that house. Do you see that? So I took the house, and then I ended up putting sections in the house, and then I have that little bend to add character to it. Okay, This is really important. I don't know many places or instructors that teach this. This is something I learned from being in the industry for 15 years in modeling and drawing, was how to distort wonkify, put a little bend on things, and basically how to stylize something, okay? Um, part of it is centered around the key camera angle and your key area of interest in which uh, what I call the animation line is going to take place. So the characters pull up in a car, they get out, they walk up this little curved hill, they come up to the front, and then they walk around the side gate. And then it would cut, and then we were in the backyard. So that's why in this scene, I tended to put a little bit more distortion to get this angle to read, okay? Why am I not walking out stuff on the side of the house? Because I'm not even going to be over there, so why waste the time? Stick with what the shot calls for, what the script calls for, and then when I get to my backyard shot, okay, look at that, look at the structure around the pillar, that little wooden fence around the tree right there. Is it in a 90 degree? No. How did I do that? It's really easy. I took all these boards, I selected all these boards in a circle. Let me see if I can find the grouping here. Uh, there it is. Okay. Did I, did I spin all those boards? No. I took those boards, guys, I duplicated them, I put them on the other side, I hit inverse, and I inversed it to do the other side, right? Use my to your benefit, okay? I, I did half of that quarter, duplicated the other quarter, arranged some, and what did I do? I then bent the boards inward a little bit, and that was as simple as just rotating them, and then I just duplicated them along that curve, and that's why I got that sort of curve feel, okay? So uh, look at the table, round edges to the table, everything, okay, nice round edges, no 90s. So when you look at the back of the house, which was another shot in the house, see the curve right there on the roof, sagging roof, a little bit stylized, a little bit of a curve in here on the wood beams. The one thing I was gonna curve, but remember, I did this on a production. I had a couple days to model the set and to get it ready and prepped to go to the next apartment. So I was, you know, under the gun here, okay? Um, I, I would have considered taking this and wonking this out, just slightly distorting it, bending it a little bit to the, to the side here, and then I would have had a little bit more fun on the stairs, you know? But there are some other elements in the backyard. Look at the fence line, curves in the fence line, different slats of wood going around, you know? Um, that there's a scene that happened there, but anyway, so you get a good idea. So now with that said and done, let's go over. I want to show you how to do, um, the roof structure. Okay. One second here. Let's minimize that scene. Let's come back over here to the other scene real fast. Okay. My bad. Let me pull it up here. There it is. Okay. All right. So second part of this lecture, we're talking about distorting. Look at the window that I have right here. Let me show you this. Let's start with the dormer, okay? Look at this dormer. It's straight up. It's 90 degrees. Do you see that? Everything on that's 90 degrees. That turned into that, a little bit more stylized, okay? How did I do that? It was really simple. I touched this base point right here. I grabbed the vertices. 
I pulled them back a little bit like this. Okay. When that was done, I selected the window. Okay. Hold on. Let me adjust this in my outliner. Let me hit F. There it is. There's frame, which connects to... Um, there's my window. I'll group to... Actually, that's just part of it. Nope. Nope. There it is. So then I selected the window. I took the window, and I rotated that at the angle to follow. Now... I grab that and move the vertices in, so I, it's going to read as 0, 0, 0. I don't know exactly what angle is. This is where you just grab the window here, and you just eyeball it. Okay. So I'm going to grab that, look at it. It's about equal distance from here to here. Push that slightly back in. Now that has a bend on it. And then what did I do? Now, I didn't bend this upper part right here. And the reason why I didn't bend that is that I already have a pretty good bend on the previous roof. Okay. Actually, that's a straight roof, but on the other scene... I had a good bend in there, and I didn't want to overbend things, okay? So what I did instead is I selected all the tiles on the roof like this. I grouped them to this core piece right here like this. And then what I did is I just put a slight rotate on them like that, and I bend them down, and I dropped them down just a teeny bit. And then you can see here this back part is now popping through. So... Um, well, it's popping through because I changed the rotation angle of that upper roof line. So I'm going to grab the vertices here. I'm going to grab these. Just drop them down a little bit more and create a little bit of an angle there. That's it. So that is how I created that. And then that stuck in to the side of the house. Okay. So here, let me pull up that other version right here. Actually, I ended up did... forgot. It's been a while since I've been on this set. But you can look. See, I ended up... I did bend it right there. See that? And it fits together pretty nicely. Look, I even bent the inside walls as well. I just forgot I did it. It's been a while. Okay, but now let's go back to the other scene there. So here I am when I'm looking at this. Um, I can't bend this right now for two reasons. One is I don't have any subdivision lines in there to bend, so I can select that piece. I can look at it in my see-through mode. I can go to my, my key here. I'm going to insert some subdivisions along where the roof tile line is. Okay? Does that make sense? Because that, that way it all sort of bends at the same time. Now I can select Actually, I should have done it to my model here. Let me just do that again really quick. This is why it's really important to come to get into you know a drawing background with when you're working in Amaya because the problem solving techniques I use for drawing are being applied here in you know a three dimensional point of view there so now what I can do is I can come over here go to my lattice points I can select this row of lattice here I can select that there see and I could start to bend this up a little I can grab these and these now and bend those up a little bit more and Let's select all, delete history, and there. Now I have a nice little bend. You see that? Okay, so I had to go in and throw those little subdivisions in there. I got a cool little bend, and now the same thing would happen here. If I want to go through here, I have no subdivisions in there. So you could come in and insert edge loops and just go down. Try to make them, that was horrible, Phil. Try to make them as even as possible. Like so, and now if I come in here, I could bend that a little bit and so on, okay? Now, same thing with the roof line. I didn't really go over how to make a roof line with you guys, but it's pretty basic, right? Let me show you. First thing you're going to have is you're going to have this piece right here, okay? Wait, hold on a second. Let me move this out of the way. So that concludes how we got. I showed you right there. Sorry, I'm like moving too fast here. That's how we went from a straight edge dormer to a nice bended curve sort of stylized dormer. Now on the roof, straight edge roof, right? The underlining structure of the roof, you're going to want to have this right here. The reason why you're going to want to have, it's just like uh, how a real roof is built. There's a sheet of plywood. The reason why is when we render sometimes and you're moving tiles around, you want to be able to assign a darker value or a light wood value to this. So that way it looks like tiles sitting up on top, right? Because when we get into the detail and we punch a hole, it's not just going to go into a cube. Is it? Uh-uh. That's the cheesy way. Mr. Aaron Porras, who isn't here today, okay, was punching holes in the stuff without thinking about or giving any consideration on what the building structure might be. Okay, so I have this base little line right here 
that my tiles sit on. And for my tiles, my tiles are really easy. You can make one simple low poly tile. I made this tile out of nerves, actually. It's a pinched off, and the reason why I did that is because on the show that I was on, they wanted as many nerves as possible because nerves tend to render faster. Okay, so when areas of detail, they would ask us to use a lot of nerves. That's changed a lot a bit in the industry since the time I did this scene because a lot of a lot of companies have now gone poly proxy where everything's polygon that's being smooth. And that's just a change. But this is actually, if I right click on this, you'll see I have vertices and isoforms, which is just fine. It's the same principle that I can get in there if I go to vertices. I can manipulate or bend those vertices. So make sure if you're going to put, um, create a base roof tile and you're going to bend your roof, those tiles better have one or two light little subdivision lines in there to go along with the bend, right? Or else it won't bend. What if it's a part of your roof line where you're not going to bend? Maybe you're going to take the roof and do this and tilt it a little bit. If there's a little bit of a tilt to your roof, then you don't have to have those insertions in every roof tile. Okay? All right. So we talked about this underlining structure and why it's so important. You see how it feels real? Because in a real roof, you have shingles that sit on a piece of wood like this. Okay? And then I have that interior Victorian detail that I modeled up that's right in here. Okay? All right. So um, now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put a bend on this. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select my roof line. I'm going to go to Alt L for my lattice. I already have my lattice set up for 5x5x5, five by five by five, which is sort of a default setting that I like to use. I'm going to right click, go to lattice point. I'm going to select. So this is part two now of our lecture where now we are bending shapes. So first we did counter angle. Now we're bending. And I'll do the step three lecture on Thursday where we start punching holes into stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I go to grab this. What's going to happen, guys? Uh-oh, what's happening? My roof line's bending just fine. Okay. That's what I love about nerves, though. Nerves are great for that because, you know, but they're a little bit more, make the set a little bit higher. I forgot to add insertions. So in that other line, in the, the wood paneling underneath. So I'm going to delete the history off of that. Okay. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select just that wood panel so I can see it. Go to my see-through mode. Okay. I'm going to go to... Insert edge loops, and I'm going to come along, and I'm going to click in the major areas. Now, I'm being very specific here. I could probably go a little bit wider, but I'm going to try to put my insertion right along where my tile lines are. That gives the roof, the underlining structure, the ability to bend with the direction in which the tiles are bending, which is very important for me. Okay. Now I select this. Now as I go to lattice, and something about lattices, by the way, I go 5x5x5 five by five by five to start. I've noticed sometimes that if I do that, I can get a jagged edge feel to things. So if you're coming in to part of your lattice here, let me show you this. Let me see if it'll do it. And if I'm grabbing this selection right here, and if I'm bending this a little, see how it creates a real straight line right there? That's because I only have 5x5 five five selections in the lattice there. So what I can do is if I select this right now, delete the history, Come back over here, go to animation, go to animate. I'm going to drop back down into create deformers here. Let's go to lattice, go to the option box. Now in the option box right here, I'm going to change this from five to let's say seven. Hit apply. Okay. Now you see what's happened. Now I have seven subdivisions inside my lattice there. So now as I go inside here and I start to distort this, I'm not going to have as much length in between the bends. Does that make sense? The secret to a lattice is, is you want to have the lattice following at the angle of a curve if you're distorting, meaning that you want to adjust these. So watch. Let's start here. So I'm going to grab this outside one. I'm actually going to start from the outside and work in. Here, I'm going to start there. Make sure I have all of the, the points just selected. There they are. And, and Oh, look at that. Whoa, way too much, right? So look, if I bend that up just a little bit like so... Now I'm going to select these two. I'm going to select these two here. I'm going to bend them up just a little bit, just so slightly. So when I'm talking about that curve, this is that curve. I want this upper line of the lattice to feel as smooth as possible as a curve. If I get a jaded section like this that's straight, that has a huge angle, that huge angle is going to show up in the deformation of my, of my, of my typology. Does that make sense? So you try to keep that 
curving as slow as possible, okay? So then I might select these three here, and I might select these three right there, and now I'm gonna pull them up just a little bit like so, okay? Okay, now, I just bent that, but what else if I wanna, if I really have to walk something? Remember, it's not just about moving vertices, it's also about rotating the vertices. So now I could come back over here to lattice points. Look at how cool this will be if I grab this section here and I do that. See, I just lightly pinch them together. It's pinching the upper rouge tiles, but now I've created a nice little curve on there. And what I can do is I can come back here. I can lightly rotate these a little bit, and then I can come back to the end section, and I can put a light rotate on that. I come over here. I select history. I undo it. And now I have a little bit of a pinch there in the middle. That's my bad. I can go back and adjust that. I would probably put in about eight, maybe nine lattice points in there. I have it's just pinching a little bit, and that might be because of the way I inserted the edges. But that's an easy fix. I just command Z a couple steps, you know, and I can go back and modify that interior line and get that to work. Okay. But anyway, that is how we go from taking a straight structure like that. And then that's how we create that. Uh, oh, that's our straight structure. Sorry, wrong set. That's how we get to that right there. A nice light curve that's bending inside my roof line. Okay, that's how we stylize something a little bit. All right, so just as a quick review of what we've gone over in this lecture before I stop it here, okay, we talked about principles of this lecture is that we are talking about how to distort and create a little bit of stylization onto a set. We have a set that's at a 90 degree angle. It's what we call a straight build that where everything is plumb and at 90s. First thing we do is we talked about introducing counter angle. If I have my roof slightly tilted, then I'm going to come over, I'm going to counter angle tilt uh, the lower roof to another angle, and then I counter tilted the door angle accordingly. That's a term called contrapasta in figure drawing, where we're looking at the angle of the shoulders, the angle of the hips, and perhaps even the angle of the hands or the feet that are all contradicting each other. It makes the drawing much more interesting. The same thing translates into 3D. Okay. The next thing we did as we came over, we looked at the window and we talked about distortion of the window, but we talked about leaving the baseline of the window flat at a what we call a plumb angle. There's a reason for that. Even when we're doing a drawing of a house and I'm doing a, a conceptual sketch, right? We don't want to distort that lower segment down there, and there's a reason for that. The reason is, is that if we distort that and pull it off the foundation, Anything else that we're stylizing doesn't quite look like, so we tend to leave the bottom angle nice and plumb and square with where it meets the ground plane. Okay, um, we talked about style, finding the pathway or the key, what we call the line of, I call it the the, the line of animation or the main area of where the animation is going to take place. In this scene, it was here in the front and it was around the corner, so those tend to be the two larger areas that have been stylized inside my location. Okay, um, and then the next thing we talked about was bending and distorting, and I showed you guys how to bend and distort. We focused on, just to review here, we focused on bending and distorting the, the dormer and how to get that to look like so, and then we talked about how to add insertion points under that support piece and get that to bend. So remember, if your shingles are just one piece of poly right now, you need to go in there and insert a couple edge loops in there to get them to bend. If you want to create it out of a NURB, that's just fine. Create it out of a NURB, that way it has other vertices that allow that typology to bend, and then you could always convert it later on if you wanted to to a poly. But we've been working with poly proxy, right? We've been working with the one to three smooth option. If you use that inside your workflow, you shouldn't have a problem. Like I said, I modeled this scene I don't know, about seven years ago. And when I modeled this set for a, a show at that time, you know, the, the, um, our pipeline, they wanted us to do anything that was in heavy detail in NURBS because they rendered quicker. Every, a lot of people have now moved straight to polyproxy, okay? But look at the difference. When you look at that house, guys, see what straight edges do to things? They kill things. They, they make straight 90 degree angles flatten things out. And whenever you have a chance to come into a scene, and you get to add a little bit of stylization in. Okay, a little bit of light curves, a um, little bit of, it just adds a lot more fun to the environment. Not only that, look at what it does compositionally. 
where this line swoops the eye and makes you sort of come up here, land back down here. You come over here to this roof, and this moves. I mean, there's a flow and a rhythm in the roof and the fence line and the way this comes back down and meets together. It adds so much more uh, interesting uh, design elements to your environment that pushes it up to that finalized level. Okay? All right. So I'm going to end this lecture here. Our next lecture, we'll talk about step three, which is punching holes into objects and figuring out if the tile's gone, will we see the two by fours in there and making things a little bit more uh, broken down, decrepit, and, and, you know, and sort of uh, outdated, okay, in weather. So we'll see you then.